This is the plaintiff, Joseph Matthew Montez. He says the unscrupulous defendant illegally towed his car, scratched his bumper, and charged him an outrageous amount for the tow to boot. He was parked legally. The defendant's running some sort of tow scam. And he's here suing for the $852 he's owed. This is the defendant, Lou Arias. He says the plaintiff's car was very illegally parked, and if you park illegally in his territory, he's gonna tow you. That's right, you do something wrong in his end of town, and you have to pay him for your sins, because he's gonna get you. As far as scratching the plaintiff's bumper, hogwash. He's accused of scamming a parker. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant illegally towed his car, but the defendant says the plaintiff broke the law. So tough, it's the case of sore toe. Thank you, Douglas. Joseph Matthew Montes, yes. you are suing LNL Towing, represented here by its chief executive, Lou Arias, for $852, the cost of a tow that you want reimbursed, which you say was illegal, and an estimate for bumper repair, because according to you, they damaged your bumper. Correct. Okay. Why do you have the dog? Uh, this is my service animal. What kind of animal is it? That's American Staffordshire Terrier, ma'am. Is your dog well behaved? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Very well. Let me hear from you, Mr. Montez. What happened? Yes. Uh, on the 23rd of December, uh, this is about 11 p.m., I went back to get to my vehicle. Uh, it was parked in a parking structure where my friend lives. And I um, noticed that the tow truck, uh, this gentleman's tow truck was parked perpendicular behind my car. So it wasn't attached to my car, no, my car was just there. So I, um, my friend had notified me that, that they might tow my car uh, that evening. So that's why I rushed down there. How did your friend notify you that they might tow your car that evening? Well, she had gotten a phone call from her roommate uh, who lives in the building as well, in the condo complex. And she said, hey, Joseph needs to move his car. Why was your car there? Uh, it was car my car was parked there because I had purchased a Jeep and I had nobody to um, assist me as far as moving the two cars around because I purchased it in Long Beach as where the um, complex is. So I um, left my car there because I always leave How my- How long had you left your car there? Uh, it was less than a day. It was less than a day. So I left it there probably around 6 p.m. And I, was, I went back there at about 10 p.m. to pick it up. When did you get the phone call saying your car's gonna get towed if you don't get it out of here? Uh, she called me probably- So around. you purchased the car that day, the Jeep that day? Yeah, I did. I May did. I see the, the bill of sale for the Jeep? I don't have the bill of sale for so you can't prove to me that you purchased a car that day. See, because they're saying that your car was there a lot longer than that, right? How long, according to the Homeowners Association, was the car there? The vehicle was spotted on uh, 12-22. Okay, 12-22, and on the day of the tow was what? That was 12-23. Okay, go on. Uh, so basically, I saw the tow truck there, so I went to go move my car. I had my key. I parked the Jeep in the street. And I had my key, and there's two there's two gates to get inside this uh, private complex. I had my key for to room to room my car out of the parking lot, and the gates close, and you have to be you have to have a gate opener to open both gates on either side. So I immediately saw the tow truck, so I started, you know, um, knocking on the gate, saying, "Hey, I'm here to move my car. That's my car. I'm the owner. I have my key right here," and they both ignored me. Both um, was he one of the people? Yeah, he was inside the tow truck at the time. But the homeowner association gentleman. Uh, he was ignoring me, and he said, oh, it's too late, you can't move your car. And I said, well, I'm here to move my car. There's no point to tow it when I'm here to move my car. And I knew it was unlawful to do so. Uh, so How is it unlawful to do so? Well, it's because it's, uh, I have here, um, it says in California that a, a towing company that removes the vehicle, well, here, let me just, upon the request. Hand me what you're looking at. Sure. <clears throat> so go on. They're not opening the gate until finally another car that was coming into the garage did. So I ran in after the car to go move my car. And at that point, you know, I, I started getting in a little bit of argument with the homeowners and hey, you got, this is, I got to move my car. So um, he didn't want to do that. He said, no, it's too late for that. So bottom line is he started hitching it. I even got inside my car and he, with me inside the car, started pu pulling he. us. Yes, this is the defendant. Started pulling us out of the, um, out of the structure. So we were still on private property when the, the car was hitched and when I was inside the car. He pulled me with the car because I was sitting in my car, uh, you, know, as a, you know, as a result of me trying to get my car out you, of wait, the wait, wait, wait. You jumped into the car as it was moving? It wasn't moving yet. 
it was still. So it was hooked up. And I got What my, kind of toe was this? The one where, yeah, where the car's like this? It's a wheel lift toe. Okay. And <clears throat> so you jump into the car mm -hmm. to stop them from taking mm -hmm. it. And what happens? And he keeps going. He keeps going. Yes. Is your door open or closed? My door was cl closed, but I didn't open it because I wanted to, you know, I started getting a little nervous. Oh, you think? Yeah. Well, you're both crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so I, um, the, the bottom line is I ended up jumping out of my car because oh, it, it became too dangerous. And oh, I, oh, but jumping out of the car was, was yeah, less dangerous. How yeah. fast was the car going when you jumped out of it? Uh, well, I mean, he was taking the turn uh, pretty quickly. And we're going down the street, and then he just starts taking out. I jump in my Jeep at that point. Wait, and, how do you jump in your Jeep? Well, I get out of the car. When I, after I jumped out of the car, I jumped into my Jeep. How close was your Jeep that your Jeep? What is this, like a James Bond movie? Yeah. <laughs> how, how close was your Jeep? It was uh, right outside the structure. And then and I started then. following him, and then uh -huh. him, he started driving with my door open, and then obviously the I- The door that you had left open yes. when you jumped out. Yes. Like, right. Yes. Okay. And I just hear the car, it's just constantly getting scraped on the concrete. Um, the, the, the streets over there- Wait, is how is the car getting scraped on the concrete? Well, first of all- the, What the, part of the car? The bumper. And that's why, with the pictures I, sh I uh, submitted, show that. Show me the pictures in court, please. Sure. So let me hear from you, because I, I can't wait to hear from you. What, ha what happened here? Well- on the uh, 12, 1223. No, I, do you have real pictures? I can't look at anything on a black and white uh, I have photocopy. One. Yeah, you have I them have... in your phone. I'd rather see them in your phone than I this. Do. This is not useful. I do. Go ahead. Yeah, on uh, 1223 at approximately 930, so. uh, we got a call out for, um, from the Homeowners Association president. And um, he wanted me to come out and remove a vehicle that had been parked there for since yesterday, he told me. So I went down there. When I got there, he was there. He signed off on it. I uh, got my camera out, snapped some pictures of the vehicle because there's some damage on the front end of the vehicle. And do you have those pictures? I don't have them, ma'am. Why not? Uh, pictures went corrupt in my what phone. What does went corrupt mean? It means you can't view them. So what do you view instead of them? Absolutely nothing. So you hook up the car and what happens? I try to, um, I try to leave with the vehicle. Had he, by the time he gets onto the property because he follows another car into the private, private mm -hmm. property, are you hooked up or not hooked up? I'm hooked up to it. Okay, and then what does he do? Does he, what happens? He tries to um, negotiate a drop of the right. vehicle. Meaning that instead of you towing it all the way to your tow yard, that he gives you some money and then you just put the car down there? Uh, yes. Uh-huh. But uh, apparently the, uh, there was a problem. Um, the registration wasn't current on the vehicle and I have no way of knowing if it was his car or not. And uh, by law, I can't release the vehicle. But was, your registration wasn't current? The registration, no, there wasn't. I had to, um, I had an appointment with the DMV the following week to oh. go take care of everything. So you it, couldn't, so that, how long did you guys spend that, discussing that? That vehicle shouldn't have been on the road anyway. You know, it wasn't the on the road, it was parked in the parking street. <laughs> for a day, yeah, right? For day. Wasn't that what you said? Like for two, four hours. Mm -hmm. So before that, it had been on the road, right? Which is it? All right, so, and so he didn't have a valid registration for the car. That's correct. How long did that discussion take place? Just a couple seconds. Didn't take very long. Okay. Uh, I told and him I was going to take the vehicle. I told him I was taking it. He told me I wasn't. And, uh, and then everybody had to play King of Mas Macho and risk life and limb. When he jumps into the car, what are you doing driving I'm driving this away guy. when he did that. I understand you're I very didn't. macho. You're very, that's what, I, I, I get it, okay? But I, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to understand when, um, I, when men <coughs> stop, men and women, frankly, stop doing that. When somebody says, okay, this guy's going to kill himself. He's going to jump out. A car's going to run him over, and I'm going to have liability, if not guilt. So when do you, wh how far were you going to go? You were just going to tow the car with the door open for how long? Well, he was inside the vehicle. Was the door closed or open <coughs> when you were towing it? The vehicle was, the door was closed. He, when he gets inside, he closes the door. He got inside, closed it. I didn't know he'd gotten inside and closed it until he hit the brakes on me. Then, then you realize he's then in Then I there. realize there's somebody in there. But you don't stop. You keep driving. But I just kept on going, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How and long were you, did you keep on going? I went probably a block down the street. And according to you, you get to the yard and what do you do? Well, the next morning, I went there, I went to the DMV about 8 in the morning, and then I was at the tow yard by 9. Okay, and you got the registration. Everything was taken care of, yes. And then you go to the tow yard, and what? He charged me an enormous amount of money. One was for the uh, day's uh, storage fee, as well as hookup fee, as well as uh, harassing the driving driver fee. 
Where's the um, harassing the driver fee? At the bottom of the paper, it says um, attempted to obstruct lawful removal, and it says an additional $80. Or excuse me, um, you know, I don't even know how he did it, but it went from 240 to 417. Attempted to obstruct the lawful removal of said vehicle, hence the additional hook charges prorated from 160 an hour. How much did you charge him for annoying you? I didn't charge him anything for annoying me. How much extra did you charge him? 60. $60. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And that represented what? $2 a minute for a half hour. <laughs> I asked you how long that argument took, and you said two minutes. All right, so then you pay the $417, and you're, but you're suing for an additional $435. Mm -hmm. According to you, your bumper damage is about $700. Yes, and I have the estimate. Um, okay, so why are you suing for $435? What I was is I took the estimate it cost to fix my bumper, and I knew that, it, it, that he wouldn't pay. That it's kind of because it would have been, what, 700 and. $98 plus the 417. So I just divided that pretty much in half. Really? You watch him busting your bumper up, okay? And it's all his fault, yeah. but you're just trying to be a nice guy and you're only suing for half because you figure he's not going to want to pay you the whole thing. I, I felt lucky. Because it's kind of sounding like you had bumper damage beforehand now. Well, no, it's, it's honestly, it's because my insurance deductible would have been $500 if mm. I went through my insurance. Mm. And yet you're not suing for $500. No. You're suing for half of it because you just want to be a nice guy. That's it. Not because you never saw the thing hit. Okay. Fascinating. Courts in recess. All right. So if somebody hooks your car up, can you stop the tow by paying them? Oh, yeah. Depends how desperate you are. Depends how much they want. So you think this is negotiating where you hold them up, where they hold you up? I think you should be able to, because, I mean, if you pay, then... Well, they, they're gonna, they want to take it to the tow yard. Can you stop it from being taken to the tow yard? Do you have a right to by saying, I'll just pay the fee? Do you have a right to? I don't know, but everybody has a price, right? So you have to negotiate with the guy. Yeah, with the guy. Fair enough. Going inside the courtroom. He just, he just made you angry. The guy jumped in. The guy made it risky for you. You're a nut. <laughs> You're a nut. You're both nuts. You're both crazy. I mean, seriously, you both, you, uh, your insurance carriers should both hear about your conduct so your rates can skyrocket because you're both a, a risk. You're, you're lying about several things, okay? Let's just, let's just you know, let's, let, let's come out with it. Number one, your darn bumper was damaged beforehand. I know it was damaged beforehand. He's taking pictures of it. He got unlucky and the pictures didn't come out. But number two, I know that the bumper was damaged beforehand and that you're a liar because you're only suing for half of it because you're a nice guy. Really? Because I've been in court a long time, and that's not how it works with normal human behavior, OK? Number three, you're telling me how you are. you a lawyer? No. OK, so you're, how you're yelling at the guy, the law doesn't let you do this. Law. No, you read up on what the law says and doesn't say. And there are some concerns that he has, you know, about, hey, I got there, so you're supposed to just let it go. And then <clears throat> your law says that you're supposed to let it go for half of the fee. But then you've got, you're right about that. But, well, you haven't said that, but that's what, what it says. But you have a problem that you want everybody to ignore, which is you don't have proper registration on the vehicle. Now, I'm torn between saying, like, everybody here knows it's your car. You're freaking out. You got the key in your hand. You're jumping up and down. You're banging Elaine like the graduate. You know, you're getting it. You know, you're, you're, everybody knows you really want that car, but is really wanting that car and seeming to be very concerned proof of ownership, you know, it's unfortunate it's for you that you did not have it registered. So I don't see why you shouldn't have to pay for a full tow when you were improperly parked there, just like the rest of us mere mortals have to do. And I also do not see why anybody would pay for a bumper that was already damaged. Now, I do not believe that, I believe that you were overcharged on the tow, and I'm gonna order him to return $92 to you, verdict for the plaintiff. So the plaintiff prevails only to the tune of $92. Mr. Arias, the defendants come out of the court. You're in a dangerous business, I think. Yes, Do you sir. think so? Yes, sir, we are. You are. Well, I'm interested to know what happened when you're driving away, he's in the car, and he put on the brakes. I had to hit my brakes quickly because it could have threw the car off the back of the truck. Yeah, it could have been really serious. Yeah, it could have been ugly. All right. Well, do you think you're crazy? No. <laughs> the judge <laughs> does. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Appreciate it. All right. You have a good one. Okie doke. Now, Mr. Montez, you only got $92. The judge didn't believe you. Just yeah. plain didn't believe you. Well, what do you this, think? If this was in California, I would have gotten the entire amount. Um, I believe I'm not a liar. 
uh, what happened was, was my bumper, I just considered the fact that in court, it's really almost impossible to get everything that you want. So I made a, I was trying to be fair. You know, you couldn't and pull the wool over the judge's eyes. That's really what it comes yeah, down to. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. Pretty Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. You must sign some documents before you leave. Harvey? Okay, Doug, here's the thing. Uh, the laws vary from state to state. There are a lot of states where you do have the right to um, actually stop the tow, but even if you don't have that right, you can always negotiate. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.